Do you notice that James O was fixing his hair when he caught the ball? Yes. <laughs> he chucks it out, he chucks it out and then goes back to fixing his hair. Fix his hair. Goes, oh, I better catch this ball. Catches it with two hands, which the ball's been kicked like 60 metres. Catch it with two hands. Gives a perfect pass to Hugo and then goes fixing his hair again. Yeah. I'm like, bro, you're in the middle of a Six Nations game. Joe presents House of Rugby, together with Bank of Ireland, proud supporter of the four Irish provinces. Hello and welcome along to House of Rugby together with Bank of Ireland. I'm Greg O'Shea and the team is back together after an awesome Six Nations weekend. Lindsay and Jason are in the room. Lindsay, my love, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm very, very good. All the better for seeing you and Jason. And Jason, <laughs> how are you, brother? Best party week. Good, good pal. Uh, enjoying uh, a good weekend. Yeah, you watched all the rugby, I presume. Yeah, well, it's only one game that mattered, but of course I watched the whole lot, but what a game that's. Unbelievable game stuff. Like, <laughs> we will definitely get stuck into that. That's going to be the bulk of this episode, yes, guys. It is. What a game. But before we even talk about that, our very own Pat was in the Aviva Stadium and he got chatting to the captain of Ireland, Johnny Sexton, and also the head coach, Andy Farrell. So that's coming up later in the podcast. So definitely uh, wait for that. It'll be a good little chat. But Ireland won 32 19, guys. I, I did think Ireland would win, but I didn't think it would be by that margin. Like, mm. unbelievable stuff, Lindsay, wasn't it? I would. I was given five points or less that that because you know that's been kind of you know with two top teams I was like there's no way it's going to be anything more than that I think I was like a penalty here penalty there someone just getting the rub of the green but by God like I don't know about you lads I'm absolutely exhausted this morning I was like God what a weekend you know I felt like I was playing every single phase with them do you know and I'm sure you're the same like I know you were in the stadium the atmosphere was electric wasn't it yeah yeah it so me and you electric. were in the stadium and it was just I was kind of worried because you know Ropey's getting to the point now where it's getting a little bit corporate and there's people yes. at games like that that have been given tickets because they're involved in some business but they don't actually give a crap about <laughs> the rugby and they haven't come up from the grassroots <laughs> yeah. but, I, but you got there and the, like Walking into the stadium and even like the chanting beforehand and half time, there was just a buzz like because the game from minute one was actually incredible as well, yeah. wasn't it? And I was on the dart action the way over and I took opportunity. I was surrounded by a couple of French lads from Toulouse and they were like they had the French beret on. They had their face painted and I just couldn't resist. And I was like, how do you think you do today, lads? And I wasn't dressed in any gear. So like, oh, no, we will win. And I was like, oh, I have a tissue here, actually. I think you should hang on to that because I think it's going to oh be Ireland's God, day. So I was just it? winding them up on yes. the dart on the way over. <laughs> but you know what's lovely? We shook hands. We wished uh, everyone luck. And it was a, it was just a great day. And there was a, do you see the corner? The French fans from kind of top to bottom of the East End, I think it was, they were just bouncing from start there to finish. So and they were really French. creating the yeah. atmosphere. I fantastic. couldn't get over how many French people were there. It was honestly like, I, I, I thought it was like, are we in Paris by any chance? Like the chanting was huge. And when they were doing that jumping up and down that you're talking about, yeah. I was like, dude, they're very good. Like, they must have come in their thousands. Oh, yeah. And when Le Bastille went, came on, like, it was just like, yeah, we're in, like, Paris. It was just like, like, the sound reverberated around. I was like, the hairs went up in the back of my neck. And I was like, oh, it's a yeah. test match today, boys. And unfortunately, I think the supporters, we lost the battle against the French supporters, but at least we won on the pitch. That's all that matters. I think we were so nervous. Yeah. That's what I think. Like, people around me, I could see them kind of like, like this lovely glistening glow of sweat be, like you know on their forehead I was like it's alright we got this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jason you watched it at home yeah I think that's exactly how I feel I mean look the last time we were on this show I was saying I'm worried about Wales I'm worried about Gatland and they went out like and made me eat my words and yeah. absolutely smashed Wales with a bonus point in the principality and going into this game then again like you're coming up against a French team that hasn't lost in over 12 months who are favourites for the World Cup and I know that we're at home and we're, you know, going into this game, like, fired up. But I was still worried. Yeah. I think for the first time ever, and I hate to say this, um, I'm not apprehensive anymore. I'm coming off the fence. Like, we are that good. Yeah. I know we've said this before. And we go, oh, this time feels different. We are that bloody mm -hmm. good at the moment. It's actually frightening. That first 40 minutes of rugby, just from 1 to 15, the tries that we scored, the, the, the manner in which we played, everything about the game was mm -hmm. just... That was the two best teams in the world playing at the weekend. And we are now the best team in the world. And we've proved that, which is, it's just incredible. It is absolutely incredible. Like mm. there's, and there's a gap between number one and number two. Like there was a mm. good beating. Like France turned up and they had a full, fully stacked team. And we also had injuries. Like you forget, probably the best player in the world, arguably Tyg Furlong was yeah. missing. Mm -hmm. He's such a pivotal player. Healy was missing. Gibson Park was missing who's our starting nine. Dan Sheehan's probably our starting hooker. And Henshaw was out. Five guys that you could argue that would have started. Top players. And we still smashed the best team in the world who had all their top guys playing. Yeah. I was actually completely taken aback by it. And fellas that 
wouldn't have usually stepped up in the past, but always just kind of filled in, like Herring and Bealham and McCluskey. Mm. They were like some of the best players in the pitch, weren't they, Lindsay? Well, yeah, like we've said it for week on weeks, building up to this, I suppose, Six Nation tournament, that the key for Ireland and the exciting part for us is the depth. You know, mm. we can see the depth in the provinces, but I think we clearly saw the depth and maturity now coming through for for those lads who've been waiting very patiently, you know, and grinding away. Um, I think the variation of our tries were was exceptional. You know, last week we grinded out a win against a very dogged Welsh team. We all, you never know where you're at where you're at in a Six Nations till your first game. Uh, but obviously we had the dogged try by Porter. We had the kind of and a bit unfair and fair play to Dave Kilcoyne corrected us after the game. We were like, oh, it was very uh, Joe Smith-esque in the Keenan try. And he said, no, that's a fast try. And I loved that about him, the loyalty and the buy-in. And they just, they were just brilliant. And I just think, yeah, I'm a bit like you. Um, I'm off the fence now. I, can't, I think it's the apprehension because you just don't want to dream. You don't no. want to dream because you don't want the heartbreak, you know. But I think um, our defence, I thought Hugo Keenan's position because... Now, I'm a forward, so when I saw the kick and I was like, Jesus Christ, if I was the prop now, I'd be like, will you stop kicking because you're running and you're running? But like we won that battle for territory and our position was exceptional. Our attack, um, I just thought, I just didn't think at any stage we we're going to lose the game. Mm. Do you know? I think there was a, a period, like which I think is a, a period I'd like to watch back the game again, but I remember like watching it live. There was a period for about 20 minutes in the second half where you could see all of a sudden, there was guys were starting to slow down. The speed her up was getting yeah. really slow. There was a lot of missed tackles and you're kind of like, oh shit, here we go again kind of a job. And yeah. France worked their way back into the game that, you know, they were, they, they were within a, it was a six or seven points at that stage. It was 25-19. Like, yeah, yeah, and you're kind of like, oh, we're in trouble here. Yeah. We're in big trouble here. And I thought, I really did think we were in trouble. And Irish teams in the past like would, would have fell to that and they would have fallen back and France would have taken the lead. But they just grinded it out, kept playing, kept playing, kept playing. And then a moment of magic from Doris. He reminds me of like, it's like playing rugby away, like, and it's that guy with that star over the top of his head. And you can just press L1, R1, try <laughs> whatever button you want to press, and he'll just go. Because if you look back and watch that pass, like, the position he's in to be able to throw, it's, what is it, a 15, 20 meter pass out to Ringrose. And then Ringrose then to bounce off three players, yeah. like they weren't even there. I mean, that, that the handoff to the chest to Jalabert, like, or it wasn't, sorry, not Jalabert, it was Penno. Mm. I mean, no, like, Jalibert, finish, yeah. Yeah. No, Pino, Jalibert, sorry, what's Jalabert, 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 apologies. Yeah. Yeah. So I got, I got it right the first time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just the quality of that try in the end, then, like, and then, then you knew it was, okay, okay, don't doubt these boys no more. But yeah. did you, uh, Joe, what I loved, Carrie Ring Rose, it was like his newborn child. <laughs> I could see him. He hugged that ball like no one was getting off him. As soon as he got by the three tackles, he just hugged it and he made sure that There's it. actually a photo. We, like I said on the past morning, we have, we'll put it in the post, set it, and you can just see it. He's there holding the ball, smiling, and you just three, you see the three French guys on the ground just looking up at him. Like, and they're, Please and you're like, this is, this is, this is like a, pa this is like a painting. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, hanging in the Louvre. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was uh, <laughs> Fico, Jalabert, and Penel all yes. lying on the ground looking up at Gary Ring Rose. You know, like, and then it's just, photo. it just encapsulates <laughs> the whole day like and they're three top class players like you know world it's not as if he's running around boys like these no. are some of the best players how in good the world. is he though yeah, like Ringrose. you think Gar Gary Ringrose is like and I think I'm not sure it was you Pat someone posted like Gary Ringrose up for this game and he's like you know before the game he's slicing his hand you know and he's nearly picking out his victims he's like I'm going to get you I'm going to get you and you just think uh, he had a great game the last day you know he was probably player of the match and then he just brings it up another level like he was unbelievable he bounced off Fiku once I think in the game and I was like oh god I thought he knocked himself out mm. after that he was just absolutely exceptional he's top class absolutely mm. top class and what I think is we need to really acknowledge is that France were giving respect to Ireland in the sense that they were taking their points so they weren't kicking yes. to the corner and mm. going for the line oh we're going to try here they were like we got a penalty we better take our points here and Ramas was kicking like unbelievably you did a drop goal at one stage like, drop which is so un-French like for them to be going yeah. for something like that you're like it was very afraid here. Like, yeah, no. they were, it was like they were afraid afraid is probably reaching too far yeah. now but they were Respectful. showing a lot of respect to Ireland being like every time we get into the half we need to come away with points because we're not going to beat these guys and they were leading at one stage but Ireland just kept chipping away and we scored what was it four tries we scored yep four bonus tries point. to one four tries to one and incredible tries you talked about the Gary one which was the last one but let's go back earlier in the game that Hugo Keenan try Unbelievable. I've watched it back so many times. I'm like, that, it came off a counter attack. Mm. And did you notice that James O was fixing his hair when he caught the ball? Yes. <laughs> he, chucks it, he chucks it out <laughs> and then goes back to fixing his hair. Fixes his hair. Goes, oh, I better catch this ball. Catches it with two hands, which the ball's been kicked like 60 meters. Catches <laughs> two hands. Gives a perfect pass to Hugo and then goes fixing his hair again. Yeah. I'm like, bro, you're in the middle of a Six Nations game. Just shows how chill he is. Like, <laughs> you know? Totally chill. 
But I, they obviously, I asked that, you know, it was this something they had obviously identified. It wasn't the first time they'd given that inside ball. So they'd obviously identified French, the French pillar. Yeah, like that, leaves that, that's something they must have spotted yeah, like, they, in, in the French game because, OK, when we're coming, when we're when we're uh, coming back with a counterattack, when they're kicking, when they're clearing their lines, yeah. that there is this space there. Because if you look at okay, one thing we have to give credit for, I said this before we come on air, is the, the carry by Doris in the lead up to that. He does some massive footwork and then carries hard. I think it's, I think it's Jalange or something he comes into and he drives him back about 10 metres. Yeah. And then that sets the whole thing up because all of a sudden they're on the back foot now, suddenly. They didn't yeah. expect this. And uh, if you look at it, like it's like Bielham, it, I, I would kind of say as good as Detroit was, that it wasn't really, it wasn't the best defence from France. Because if you look ah, at no. it, if Antonio you look at, is just like getting looks up. like he's running through like a, a walkthrough in, 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 before the game because mm. he doesn't even look to carry. He just stops like this and then pops it up. Only for Keane to come on at such yeah. pace, I would be a bit upset. Like for a team that's trying to go into the World Cup, like go into a home World Cup and are expecting to be the, the favourites. Mm. You, you shouldn't have conceded a try like that. And that's not taking the credit away from Ireland. They shouldn't have Oh, no, they try. obviously identified it because that wasn't the first time they, they ran that, you know, that gap at the pillar. Mm. Um, I must look at it, but like there was a couple of times they ran it. But the other bit, it wasn't only Keenan. There was like three lads ran such hard lines. They like bamboozled. They just sat all the French down and they were, the French were obviously scrambling onto mm. the open side thinking, oh, we're short numbers here. Um, Antonio was a bit lazy now. He's like, you know, There's nonchalantly. Space there, like. <laughs> it was huge. Look, <laughs> you identified the gap, you go. Was. Yeah. And I would agree. <laughs> Bielan was like, right. He was like a lad yeah. so concentrated. He's like, right, no. Yeah. Here. Okay, I did what I needed Didn't to do. Didn't even know. look as in make it, make it out. So oh, I'm going to carry here. And he just kind of went, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, Jesus, I mean, that was pretty obvious how pre planned it was. So I was like, it was Yeah, they've done it in Portugal, I think, in yeah. their training camp. Obviously, they, they'd done a bit of video and this was a thing they identified. But look, um, it was kind of like the French were respectful, but I, I'm not sure where they were trying to target Ireland other than kicking long and trying to, you know, pin us in. I didn't yeah. think there was much that they did differently for us other than Dupont upped his game again and was, I thought he was exceptional to be honest. Yeah, yeah, it was incredible to sure that they definitely had that pre plan because they did it on eight minutes into the game. So mm -hmm. they noticed that um, there was a, a defensive line of France were quite porous and, and they found that gap and Antonio was just strolling back. But you, as you said, Bielham, um, he threw that pass blindly to Keenan because he couldn't see Keenan coming on the far mm -hmm. side. Like, so it was completely scripted, but it worked perfectly. And that's mm -hmm. why Andy Farrell is such a good coach. Like, yeah. So uh, people are trying to give it to Joe Smith. Joe Smith's kind of donkeys, lads. Yeah. Everyone needs to forget <laughs> yeah. about Joe Smith. This is Andy yeah. Farrell's team. Correct. like So Joe Smith's gone play, coaching New Zealand now, so forget about that fella. Um, another unbelievable try. James Lowe, what a finish, lads. Tom Daly would be proud of that dive. Like. <laughs> Ridiculous, wasn't what, it? What can we, can, like, people are going to ask this question also. We can't sit in the fence, let's be honest. Was it a try? Was there a, <laughs> was there a little bit of a brush on the grass or not? Because there is angles there and there is a lot of like big respected pundits that are saying and respected athletes and players that are saying it wasn't a try. And like they're all giving out like because we will get onto that later on. We obviously know that the Antonio incident with Herring, like that was as blatant and as clear a red card. Oh, I'm going to argue with that, Noel. I, I will we'll, we'll get on to that, yeah. but like, there are people saying, like, sure, oh, they can't turn around because Lowe's try wasn't a try. So, for me, uh, if I'm honest, I think there was perhaps a slight brush of his foot before he gets it down. I Not hear. taking it away from him. I think they made the right decision on the day because the question was, it wasn't like, is it a try or not? Is there any reason I can't award a try? So I don't think there was compelling evidence to say it wasn't a try. So it was the correct decision. Like people are saying, oh, it shouldn't have been a try. It was the correct decision based on the question he asked and based on the event. But there is question marks over, did he or did he not like? And I think there's a fair argument there to say that perhaps a little bit. <laughs> right, not hang on, I get go, go, got your eyes, right? Because I don't know how you're going to do that unless there's sensors on the grass that are going to oh, beep on you. Do you know what I mean? The decision right, but like, yeah. I think for to get the timing right, the ball down, and if there was the slightest of brush of leather and grass, <laughs> right? If we're being technical, which we'll here never know, we're being technical here now. Jesus, we're very pedant, we're yeah. very pedantic. Like, you're not going to see a try like that no. again for a long, long time. No, do you know what I mean? So for the, the try, for the absolute Lee Roadie that he has to even try that and think about it. And the way he puts it in one hand like he's an NFL player. 
Yeah. Like for those wondering what Leroy that. means, it means balls. <laughs> um, yeah, it was unbelievable. Yeah, we've said Africans <laughs> listen to this; they've no idea what Leroy right, it's means. Right, balls. He's Throw from yeah. whatever he, he needed. What, what, six foot three, seventeen. Is he about seventeen stone? Yeah, he's built like a back roll. You know, I mean, <laughs> really the lightest winger. Gravity there, yeah. like, literally defied gravity to hold to stay in the air that long. And against Penno, like who yeah. had another, That's he was exceptional. I was thinking, I was like, how has he managed to keep his leg off the ground here? It's like he's floating in midair. Yeah. But I'm presuming it's because Penno has hit him so hard. It's Giving yeah. him that extra momentum to literally a whiskers like to yeah. get a, to keep that foot off the ground. And as you're saying, Lindsay, the only way someone's going to spot that is if there's sensors Correct. on the grass. Like, so give him the try. Question marks over that penalty tackle as well, in fairness. If he didn't yeah. get the try, there's question marks over that tackle. Oh, and how, le- how legal it was. Probably would have gone back to be a penalty try in the yellow card anyway. Like, so saved ourselves a bit of time because the TMO took forever as well, doesn't it? Mm. Is there oh. kind of a way, do you think, Jason, that we can speed that TMO up or does it have to be that way? Uh, to be honest with you, I mean, it's a tough one. Was, that comes back to what they want to do is give the referees more ownership and give the, the, the linesmen more ownership. But then if they get those decisions wrong, then we're going to give out why didn't they use the TMO? Mm. So in terms of speeding up, I suppose... There's just no winning, like... There is no winning. So maybe it's the technology and maybe it's the guys that are there and like maybe they need to be a little more ahead. Maybe they need more help inside in the, the, the TV room and not mm. just have... It's just... Because Yemo and his assistant, like maybe they need more bodies in there like and maybe they need more screens so that they can get it quicker and maybe it's just that they need to see an incident once and like act on the decision. Like yeah. as I think getting onto that Antonio decision, like for me, like that is as clear... Yeah, we can talk about it now. Yeah, it's the Antonio... Our uni Antonio uh, tackle and Rob yeah. Herring. And he absolutely spanks him back. But like in fairness, Rob Herring, he takes it, he gets up and he actually catches the ball and passes it on to mm-hmm. I think, whoever was outside him. So he was, wasn't completely wiped out, but it was a massive hit. What do you think, Lindsay? It was a massive hit. Like in the letter of the law and the... That's going to be on the mic there, Jason. Oh, sorry. <laughs> He's just having a beat while I'm uh, chatting yeah. here. Um, if we're going to go letter of the law... Like how Wayne Barnes didn't say it was a high degree of um, like he hit him. Well, like what, what weight is he? He's about oh, 100. He's, he's lost 100. Weight, like, but for me, he's it's still about 140 kg. Yeah, I think. yeah <laughs> it's, it's two guys going in fully upright. Mm-hmm. He connects shoulder to his chin. Now, Rob Herring went off shortly after that for a HIA and didn't return. So that shows you that there was a high level of danger. There was a high level of force. To me, there's no mitigation there whatsoever because he makes no attempt to lower his tackle light and he connects flush with his chin, with his shoulder. But see, so he, doesn't bring his, he doesn't bring his shoulder up. Like, he could have ended Rob Herring, to be honest, because yeah. he's about, he is, what, six foot three, I'd say, easily. But he still connects with his chin. He does, but the height difference, you see. Now, mm. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, condoned this. Yeah. Like, it should have been a red by the letter of the law. Yeah. Right. But there's a couple of things. Rob Herring is so short because he doesn't see him, mm. right? So he's not absolutely set. We've all been there and you're like absolutely doubled. You know, even if it's a good tackle, you're absolutely wiped. Um, it does hit him on the chest. I think he could have brought him around and wrap. He tries to me to try and keep that shoulder down. Mm. But he's, I mean, he's a slow tie head, mm. you know. But he's fully standing up. That's he is fully stand up. Me. But I think he made that decision to go and he just uh, hit him. Don't, yeah. I don't think he was thinking so. Look, you make a decision. It should have been a red. Yeah. It should have been a red. And how Wayne Barnes got it so wrong yeah. is beyond me. But I think he could have ended him more. So it's one of those. We just have to be consistent with the letter. If we're, if we're going to, like, if, like where we've been around the show so many times, like, if we're, if if this is a yellow card and, like, if they don't come out and cite him or don't come out and say, okay, look, we made a mistake, that, that should have been a red. Mm. Like, what do we do next game? Like, why do we keep going back? And why is there so many question marks over? And why are we still arguing? Like, why aren't we just protecting players? Yeah. That, like, Rob Herring went off for with a HIA. So Rob Herring was injured with a head injury and didn't come back yeah, on. But hold, hold so on. it was whatever, like, the, the tackle was dangerous. Yeah, but forget about Rob Herring getting injured, like, do you know what I mean? In the sense that, like, we're talking about the, the incident here. The yeah. injury is going to be, like, depending on the person and their predisposition and, and whatever mm. happens. But, like, I'm talking about the actual tackle. In my opinion, this is going to be unpopular opinion. Okay. I think it was a fair enough hit. I do think on initial thing at the game, my and, thoughts And on. I know you don't agree with that, Jason, but I'm like... You're saying he hit him flush in the chin. I feel like he didn't hit him flush in the chin. I'm okay. like, he caught him in here on the top of the chest underneath his neck. And because it was such a good read, he got off the line, got up. And he happens to be, as you said, Lindsay, 140 kg, six foot something prop. It's not his fault he's massive. No. If I'd made the same yeah. read, 
I'm five foot ten, eighty kg. I'm not gonna hit him if I make just as good as Reed and I hit Rob Herring. That's not he's not gonna get hurt like off me. Mm. Your man just happens to be massive, made a good read, and I feel like I had a massive argument with um, someone in Lansdowne Rugby Club about this afterwards, and uh, we actually just had to walk away from each other because <laughs> I'm just like you're. We're now punishing someone for making a good read, and I can and I accept your point in the sense that he probably should have dropped his hips a little bit more. But he hasn't completely knocked Rob Herring's neck off. Like, do you know what I mean? Mm. He just caught him high. But is the letter of law, it could, be st- it could be wrong now, is the letter of law that it has to be below chest height or does it have to be below chin height? Like, where's the tackle height? The tackle height is like, like it's, it's here and up, like, yeah, essentially. But, but like, well, the question I'll ask you just on your point there before we move on yeah. is the fact that you said you don't think he connected with his chin or, in, or his head or anything like that. I his feel like chest he caught first. It. You connect, well, how do you feel a HIA from a chest hit? Because you can be in a car crash and like not hit your head and, uh, and your hair is, your, your, your brain's rattling against your skull. I don't think you're going to fail a HA from a chest hit. Well, I had the argument with my dad last night. Can I think Rob Herring's concussion is possibly a whiplash one That's rather than I mean, an actual. Like, brain and I did, skull. see, I'm, I'm probably a hypocrite here because I did argue that was a yellow at the time and I still did last night. And so the argument is right. It should be a, a red on the letter of the law they're trying to implement. So player safety. And but what's this letter law? The letter law is if you hit the chin. Well, a high it, degree gone. of danger. So I suppose it is a high degree of danger. But at the same time, you've like 140 kg coming at a bit of pace. And he's made the read before Rob Herring can kind of yeah. even sidestep him. Mm. So, I mean, it's going to be a high degree if you're not ready. And this basically articulate Larry's going to hit you. a good rugby player, out of Antonio. He's red. And red well, this is the, I think this is the, it's probably an example. And it's not sitting on the fence. It's, a, it's an example of where we make the decision now mm. on cases like this because it yeah. really is a grey area. We I agree. To, to I think it was chest area. Mm. He could have raised his shoulder. It didn't. He kept this right shoulder, which is the first point of contact, down. Mm. And I'm saying there has to be some bit of thought there to do that. Because he ab- he could have absolutely broke him. Like, he could have ended if, him. If really. it was an inch higher, Rob Herring. In oh, Gonzo. Like, yeah. But I so think that's the grey area. It's just in, in and off in under his chin, in my opinion. But you're, Jason, of the opinion that it was too high. 100%. 100%. Yeah. If, 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 we're on that, if we're on that area then, then we need to lower it. So maybe a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Just so that let's sort of rule up. Because we shouldn't be having this argument. It's too close. Like. We shouldn't be having this argument and go, oh, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. We shouldn't be having... This decision yeah. shouldn't be an argument. It should be, that is definitely not a red card or that is a red card. There shouldn't be, as I said, we have a grey area here where we're kind of like, oh, I agree with some of your points, you agree with some of my points. And yeah. we're all kind of, but no one can really definitively <laughs> be saying no it was like, a red. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's what and we I need. think we need, it, it is an example of where we're still at with this. Do you know what I mean? Like it probably needs to just lower it again to make it clear because yeah. like I think Wayne Barnes, I'm so surprised of all referees that we've ever had that he didn't give a red. I thought that was just going to be clear cut for him. Yeah. And I think because of the magnitude of the game and what it could have done to the outcome and taken away from what was an absolute spectacle of rugby I think that really would you agree with that it kind of impacted yeah. his decision yeah potentially because it was such a big game but like I think I mean this guy is what he's a he's a barrister isn't he mm-hmm. <laughs> so I mean you just gotta go okay it doesn't matter who's playing doesn't matter who's in front of me I go by the letter of the law so like I mean he's a barrister so I'm pretty sure he's familiar with the term the term law and how it works so I'm pretty you know yeah but that's my question is what, of law what, that what is the ruling that he is the law that he should be working off there? Uh, I don't know what exactly what it is like. I mean, I have to read it back. Like, what I mean? like, we're getting into specifics the techni- here. The technicality of it like, is that like, is, is there a high degree of danger? Was it a high, like, it's a high tackle. It was a high tackle. Was there a high degree level of danger? Is there a mitigation to bring it back down and say that it wasn't? Mm. So like to me, like it was a high tackle. It was yeah. a high uh, level of danger. And to me, I don't think there was any mitigation there, to be honest with you. See, I think there's a high level of danger because Antonio is so big and he's just made a really good read. You can't, no, you can't say it because he's so big. That's, yeah, but that's, not, that's not mitigation. But that's my thing is like, it's just, that's rugby, man. Get over it. Like, do you know what I mean? No, no, I just, It's a big guy catching another no, guy no, with a read. That's going and back I, now to being like, that's like the, one of the guys on, on Twitter who's saying like, rugby's going soft. We need to get that out of the game. Like, that's just rugby. Like, rugby needs to evolve and to, to become a truly global sport. We need to start understanding that what we did in rugby five years ago, what we did in rugby 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, mm. is no longer relevant. We have to keep evolving because there's too many injuries. There's people getting concussed. There's guys getting brain injuries. There's guys getting CTE. And like there's, there's stuff coming out where guys are coming out with like Parkinson's and dementia. And they're even saying that, which is what we've seen in, in rugby, is MND is becoming like for a quite popular diagnosis. Yes. Very popular as a hardware, but you know, a common diagnosis common, yeah. in rugby. And they're bringing that back to head injuries as well. 
So like we have to evolve. We didn't have this idea before. We have it now. Do we want people in a wheelchair? Do we want people dead? Do we want people with brain injuries? Rugby yeah, I know what you're saying and you're getting very state. dark now, but well, let's, bring, let's bring yeah. it back to the rugby <laughs> in the sense that like I think, I do agree what you're saying that it is dangerous, but I think if we're coming to, with the rugby we're playing at the moment, I'm like, I just think it's a, it's a well-read shot, but maybe we need to make the law to a point where it has to be below chest height. Then there's ne- then it's like I think we do the, the nipple ones like I was yeah. saying before, something like that. So, because Greg is right. We're all chatting, being like, "Is the chin? Is it not? Is it?" Then like too, too, blow- too small an area to be dealing with. Like we're yeah. here between here and here. Like yeah, yeah. But there, I I do agree with you, right? Because there's always going to be high level of danger compared. Like if you had a nine against a tie head, like mm. so there's there's just such disparity in the positions as the frame and the weight of the the guys and even and even women. So mm. that's just the evolution of the game. So to cater for player safety, which we're all advocates for here, mm. yeah, and um, I agree, Antonio, sh- if something like Antonio is just like an articulated lorry coming at you and he's trying not mm. to really hurt someone, I think you have to protect both sides, the mm. attack and the defence, and really make the law clear cut and bring it down, I think, below nipples. Because you don't want to ruin the game, but you don't want to ruin it at the expense of yeah. players in it. Mm. Exactly. So I, I think this is unfortunately it's a it's a great argument and I'd say we could stay here all day, mm. but unfortunately it's just highlighting that I think World Rugby need to take control and make more clarity around the ruling of it. Yeah, it's a perfect time to talk about this new ruling they're bringing in some places with it has to be below hip height. No, no I the, think that's, that's unrealistic. That was a, a mess up like they tried to say the way sack of light and then well I think technically the RFU were trying to bring it in. But it was a there was <laughs> such <laughs> backlash that they tried to say that we were going by the French directives and our translation was misconstrued and that's not what we really mean. <laughs> and we're actually now going to go back and talk to the referees and the players who we didn't consult in the first place and we should have consulted in the first place and we'll get back to you. So they did a Michael <laughs> Jackson on it. Completely <laughs> they did a Michael on Jackson on it, yeah. yeah. I think <laughs> and they moonwalked it. If we're going to the point where it's below hip height that you're saying, Jason, that I think we're just getting away from rugby then. No, we're getting away from the beauty of the game. Like, 100%. Yeah, I agree with you. A yeah. million percent there. And people like Antonio aren't going to be able to play the game anymore because him to get low and tackle me below hip height he's never getting down there like I'm a small fella like do you know what one I mean? thing so I will say though is Herring was standing up and Herring yeah. isn't exactly Craig Casey you know Herring is what height is Herring is he 5'10 5'11 like and Antonio isn't exactly 7 foot I like, just uh, think he was so blind there isn't a huge difference there where he like he made no attempt to lower and he's coming up against a guy who's fully standing up it's mm-hmm. not like Herring was ducked last minute or slipped into the tackle where that's where your mitigation would mm-hmm. normally come in there was nothing there like he was just a straight on two guys yeah. standing up coming yeah. in and it's not like he was twice the fucking height excuse me twice the height of him <laughs> oh my god Jason's hold on we uh, get them bleepers out <laughs> Jason's very <laughs> emotional after the weekend guys if you haven't noticed yet. <laughs> can everyone send Jason a hug please because yeah. he's having we a bad morning we love it though we love <laughs> the passion <laughs> Jason having a mare this morning we love the passion um, yeah <laughs> no I, agree. I do agree with you sorry to kind of summarise I do agree with you Antonio should have dropped his height it is way too close yeah. to being mm-hmm. like where Rob Herring would be sent somewhere that we don't want him to be sent to but I thought, in my opinion, I think he was just enough okay. But um, then again, I'm not the ref and the ref made the decision. So, do you know what I mean? Um, Speedy so, recovery to Rob yeah, Herring. I hope, hope he's he okay. Go, he goes good. That's the thing, because it could have been a lot worse, yep. in fairness. Mm. Um, a cool thing that happened in the game, guys, and, and uh, it's on the French side of things. What about Dupont pulling Mac Hansen back from the, from the line? What was that about? <laughs> I tried to pull myself in Mac Hansen's shoes and I was thinking, this guy is like, yes, yeah, the easiest try I'll ever score. Yeah. And next of all, he's holding the ball out and he's like just being reversed. It's like someone had a pulley on him going, pulling him back. It was unbelievable. Yeah. It, it was ridiculous. Again, like we, we have, we've had Mac inside the suit on the show. Mac isn't small. No. He's a big you know, guy. Yeah. Mac's a big guy. What is he? About 6'2". Like, yeah. And like... I don't know what weight he is, but he's, he's definitely over enough, 90 kilos. Definitely about, over 90 yeah. kilos. Dupont, like, isn't the biggest, but it just shows you because he's he's done this time and time yeah. again. He is stupidly strong because <laughs> he just holds him. It's like it's like a, 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 a tractor's movement and you're just holding it with a rope. <laughs> like, I got this, I got this. And the muck is just like spewing. It's just like not moving. Yeah. It was brilliant. It was like time to slow down. Everyone's like, is he going to get to the line? Oh, I know. I don't believe it. Like when like, you're like, everyone's like, oh, that's such a, like, it's a try. Oh my God, try, try, yeah. try. And all of a sudden it's like, Mac is just running. His legs are gone mm. from underneath him and he's just floating in the air. It's like, how is he stopping you here? <laughs> this is insane. Yeah, that was and brilliant. Don Dupont, unbelievable 
love because the, the build up to that was incredible because uh, Mac Hansen had intercepted in front of Fico, whipped it out to Keenan and yeah. followed on. Like, so it would have been an incredible try. But in fairness, Mac Hansen took it very well and even restoried your rugby Joe post, <laughs> taking a <laughs> piss out of him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, savings yeah. and delicious points. Delicious points, yeah. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Trying to save your money with DuPont is yeah. delicious points. Hey, he's got good, good crack, like he saw the funny side of it. Like, I mean, he, I don't, he might not have reposted that if we'd lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a good crack. Out. Was it you that came up with that? No, I was just forwarded on to me for one of the lads I can just chew it up like so check out the Rubber Joe Instagram guys it's very funny Um, a couple of other people that we just want to mention in this game um, that we're hoping they're doing okay today is Ty Burr went off with injuries do we know an update on him don't think we have an update just yet Pat do we I'm wondering did he do a syndesmosis or something or Andy Farrell said it's not great it's a okay. disaster disaster mm, because yeah. how many times has this happened to him and ju- any time he just about gets back up to speed and he gets on form again he gets hit with another injury mm. like, he's been like that his whole career like you feel for him yeah, yeah. and I'm I feel like he was Lindsay, carrying if you're in dysmosis you probably have to get surgery and that's yeah. then pushing in towards World Cup territory like well, well, can you explain what that is that's so for our is your ligament on your ankle it brings okay. your foot yeah. up and down so they bring a tight rope I have one on my left so you yeah. probably haven't done as well it's very common don't say that I hope it doesn't mean it's kind of actually a backward tackle or I'd say what happened his was if you poach and you're in that poach position and you kind of get doubled over yeah you kind of lean back and snap it He'd be back. Like if he got the surgery now, he'd be back in time for the World Cup. But it's just if it's one of those prolonged issues. So well, I hope not, not. Because he's, as I said, he's like one of our most important players. Like, I mean, this guy's in the world dream team of the year. Like, he probably, he is the best poacher in the game, uh, yeah. in the game at the moment. And we'd massively, Munster will miss him, Ireland will miss him. Oh, I'm yeah. hoping hope, it's not really that bad. Hope. I think he was carrying a bit of a knockdown from the Wales game as well. I feel he was a bit. He's been non stop all year, don't forget. Yeah, his and he load. gets through some amount of work. Like, yeah. So. Who would you who would you put in there, guys? Actually, while we're on it, who would you put in to replace him? I mean, Henderson I don't think Henderson has been. One. To be honest, you, I think Henderson wasn't great when he came on against Wales and wasn't fantastic when he came on against France. And for me, I'd have a Bard or someone in there. Thank instead. you. I was going to try. I'm, I'm, I think Bard needs a honestly, run now. Yeah. To be honest with he's you, he's athletic. He's tall. He's dynamic in the in the line out. He's nearly play, he's that back row playing. He's got a g- good few poaches. He's starting to read the game that bit better, mm. and I think he needs that experience now at international to kind of fine tune that. But I certainly think he's one of the front runners. I think Henderson. Do you take a chance on him? I do, I think we're moving away from the Wales. I think he's going to be a good bench player and experience to have in the mm. squad. Do I think he starts? I think not right now with other players. Do you think it's just because Henderson has been playing consistently at the top level? He's got a few injuries and he's making his way back. I know he's playing up in Ulster and stuff, but he had a big injury at the start of the year. Mm. So maybe it's just he's not in form. But at the end of the day, he's a Lions player. He you know is. I mean? you know, he, has, well, he hasn't played much rugby this year. Like, but he's, he's, you know, he's kind of pushing on and, like, and he's giving away a lot of penalties. And you've got someone like young and hungry like Bard who yeah. there's 10, 15 years ahead of him. And like, Bard is just... Uh, he's you know, Barry was Henderson now. like ten years ago. Like, and do you want to just keep like dragging out Henderson and leaving him play, or do you want to give a, a bar to run out? Or who else is in there? See, like, what's we have? What's John McCarthy? Like, he's John very young, but, yeah. yeah, but he's another man monster who's like yeah. the way the game, like the physicality. Like, we brought in the the Darvis Carey. When you have someone making that gain line and bringing that defensive line, and like you said, creating that porous mm. and the gaps for you, that's yeah. what you want. And I think Henderson is going to be a good twenty minutes, like to close out a game. Yes, he he's not up to the pace right now that we're playing I, and I'd say this is this, the quickest cool, version yeah. of the game that Ireland have ever played and it's suiting us you know and we've athletes there mm. and that's not to undermine again what Ian Henderson has done but we said it before with Conor Murray and the likes you're an exceptional player but you're only as good as your last game and we need to create the culture and I think Faz mm. has done that I'm going to call him Faz now because I feel wrong uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people got six for Leinster this year like, so that means he's really up to that pace absolutely like, going into second row but just as you mentioned there like lads we have to say I mean like You've been saying it long enough, like it's how we finally said it, like Connor Murray, like, and especially what happened to him this week with his dad having a serious accident out in Patrick's Well. You know, he was brilliant. You know, and for him, like, he did that, like, he was passing the ball like a like, like Connor Murray mm-hmm. back like five, six, seven years ago. They, absolutely, mm. like, that's some of the best rugby I've seen him play. Like, I mean, not only, like, like to be, if you go to the last few months he's been through, like, to be dropped by Munster, yep. to be question marks whether or not you're in the Ireland squad, to all of a sudden then be thrown against Wales. And he was really good against Wales. But then happening. against France the weekend, after, like, when your dad just been a serious accent, to be one of the best players on the pitch. Yeah. Not only not only because you're not with your dad and accent, but, like, before that, people are saying, like, does he still have it? So, oh, like, absolutely. he proved everyone wrong, like, and fair play to him. And that's what you want. Yeah. But I think we should take opportunity to just wish... Uh, Mr. Murray, Jerry Murray, I believe Murray, his yeah. name, uh, and all the Murray family, a speedy recovery and uh, fair play to Connor. Like that's oh. to. 
put your personal issues and your dad and the accident yeah. to one side and go out for your country is, is testament to the man he is. Yeah. So, well, come here, you're the only one here that would never yeah. doubt him. Like, so for, like, you know, I think he proved proved you right like, mm. and proved us very much wrong. I've always been a Murray fan of parents with some resilience out of him, like, isn't ah, it? Yeah, but it's incredible. Like, as I said, like, I mean, look, we know, we know like what he's done in the past, like, and we're like, you, you don't lose that. And maybe he, you know, he has had a, a, a tough period with form. And there has been like, you know, mm. not just that, but Gibson Park has been playing really well. And like Craig Casey is a fantastic nine. So like, you know, I mean, like, you know, time moves on. Yeah. But it like, does, but class is permanent. That's it. Yeah, nice. But you wouldn't want to be given a, the nod for just on your reputation, would you? Or would you prefer to play? Um, no, you obviously want to be playing yeah. at the And that's what I mean. No one's going to undermine. Yeah, yeah. No one here undermine Conor kind of Murray. But he ne- you do yeah. need to kick up the bum. I mean, you're... Like what he the longevity of him and he he just propels the the stature of the nine and he he set that bar and like he can do it again like it's not undermining the like class is permanent like yeah. you said but I think as an athlete and as to test yourself you want that kick up the arse with someone chasing you. I think in years gone by like in in, in Munster and Leinster and Ireland even like you were you were you were just given that shot and mm-hmm. you were you were you were, you were there based on your name yeah. whereas that you just you, that you don't get to get those get me's anymore like nope. if you if you've won by a game you're dropped because there's like three or four players behind you waiting to take your jersey yeah and like you know he knows that now like where I, when i get in i have to play well yeah and he's done it yeah fair play to him yeah no well done murray and as we said it's uh, bigger than rugby i hope your father's okay and he's recovering well and you and the family are doing well um some resilience out man fair play to you um yeah, and who, who came on after him? Casey had an incredible 25 minutes with Ross Byrne. Good to see that uh, half like partnership going really, really well. How did you think it? Ross Byrne did? I thought he was class. Absolutely, yeah, wasn't yeah. he? Really well level headed, showed a lot of maturity. And so much that I was like, all right, Sexton, Sexton goes off, it's totally fine. Mm. I was really pleased, not to see Johnny Sexton going off, but that <laughs> he got a good 20 minutes to have that partnership to kind of take the reins. He There was no drop in the standard. He just came on. He did the basics very well. He was confident. Mm. He kicked well. Clear, a couple of big kicks. Some really kicks, big tough kicks. Ones as well. yeah. Um, yeah. Always looking, really confident with ball in hand, like wasn't afraid to take it to the gain line, which I liked to see. I mm. love that from him on Saturday because I think that's something that he's just lacking as regards the comparison section mm. just really getting players into that gap I um, feel like his his gameplay even though it was always class I think it's really matured now in the sense that he's confident on the mm-hmm. pitch he's making things happen rather than just he's not getting through the game he's actually running the game Yes, and same with Casey as well I thought the two of them were incredible coming off the bench um, but let's, we could keep talking about this game we've been talking about it for a long long time so let's uh, get Sexton and Farrell to talk about it because our very own Pat we're chatting to them listen to this clip guys First half was, wasn't it? He was, well, he was just end to end stuff, and we all we all hoped it would be like that, and it certainly was, wasn't it? You know, um, end to end, and yeah, even though uh, I thought um, field position wise we we controlled it pretty pretty well in the end, um, you know, it's not over till it's over, isn't it? You know, probably until the 78th minutes or something like that. You know, they, you're thinking. Um, you know, we've we've won a, a Titanic game in, in that respect. So, unbelievably proud of of the lads of what they've been through over the last three weeks, and I know that they dug in hard and um, it meant a lot to them today, and they they certainly showed that. What one of three? Pardon? What one of three? Oh, the character more than anything. If, you, if you're talking about the bigger picture stuff, I mean, um, the fight, the want to to cover each other's back, to show the togetherness and the spirit that we've that we know we've got and uh, and show it to everyone else in, in world rugby was 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 there to be seen you know we could talk for hours in in that regard of instances and um people playing not too much rugby and coming back and, and putting in performances like that when when the chips are really down in big games it shows a lot of character it was a good uh, set play um coaches obviously uh, came up with it and um yeah it's a great line uh, by Hugo, um, and great pass by Finlay. Um, so it's, it's lovely to see things like that pay off. You know what I mean? Um, and to put in the work because sometimes you know you've got your set piece, your D, you got all these things, that, and you know it'd be easy to overlook a goal line drop out just to say, just chuck it up, lads, and we'll get back into our into our shape. So uh, great finish by him, um, and he, he was outsta- outstanding again. It's clear from the start what we want to achieve. Like you know, it, that, it goes unsaid, but. Everyone knows what we want to do. We we won a triple crown last year, um, and we want to go better 
this year. That, that's what we, we speak about, keeping the trajectory like this as opposed to in 2019 when we dipped. Um, so to, to get better is to, is to win a championship or, or a Grand Slam, of course. So the next game we want to talk about, guys, is Scotland versus Wales. Not as exciting as our Ireland-France game, but we have to talk about it because it's part of Six Nations. So Scotland won at home 35-7, and Dan Bigger set himself up for failure, guys. I don't know if you heard what he was saying beforehand the, before the game, but he said, Scotland played well last week against England, but according to you guys, I presume talking to the media, they are the best team in the world, aren't they? We will have to see how they go on Saturday if they can back it up. The pressure's all on them. Well, the pressure was on him damn bigger and you got absolutely hammered, my friend. 35-7. <laughs> yeah, I think he just took a big stick there and poked that Scottish bear because he got yeah. they got their arse handed to them. It was it's embarrassing now for Wales at this stage. I thought like I was worried last week and I was like, All right, we're not gonna do this, but this week just reaffirmed. Now that's not takeaway from Scotland. I mean, two back to back wins to start a championship since nineteen ninety six. Huge. And they have had two really classy games. Finn Russell was another level. Um and they scored what, another four tries themselves, bonus point wins. So um, can't take it away from Scotland, but Wales are in dire straits. Yeah, it's sad to see. Like, And they dropped a lot of their um, kind of top fellas. Like Tiprick wasn't playing, Alwyn Jones wasn't playing, a couple of other heads. And, and Wales just seemed out of sorts, didn't they, Jason? Yeah, well, look, I mean, look, it was very much like Wales were very poor, but like, you know, not taking the credit away from Scotland, like it was very much the Finn mm. Russell show. It was, it's eh? probably one of the most complete performances from a 10 you're going to see. I mean, there's just something about him. Like, it's just... What about his offload? Yeah, I mean, like, I, I think the best part about that is if you look at it, he probably could have scored that himself. Yeah. But it's like, no, it looks better for me to do this. <laughs> and he did that. But, like, no, I mean, like, to be honest with you, the pressure was on Scotland because Scotland have been here time and time again where they get a big result and then the following week then they lose. Mm. And that was the thing. It is the lap before this game, the last two times they'd beaten England in the first game on Six Nations. They lost to Wales the second day, the second time, yeah. two times in a row. Lindsay said there, it's the first oh, time sorry. they've won their first two games since 1996. Yeah, 20 odd 27 years. years. Yeah. 27 years. 27 Six so, Nations campains. And they holy the pressure was on them, like, and then they're finally done. Like, and Scotland now like are 10 points out of 10, the same as Ireland. Yeah, they're sitting pretty with us. At the time. So, mm. Two bonus point wins. But I think um, someone said it to me there during the week, one of the lads. So like, I was saying it before. Uh, before the Wales game, like I was like, you know, it's it's Warren Gatlin, like you know, we should be worried of mm. something up his sleeve, like. But he he likened it to his, like I think what you have is you got like what Gary Neville thought when Jose Mourinho was around and Jose Mourinho was past it. I think poor Gatlin is past it because the same thing happened with the Chiefs and there was question marks with him over that line, that most recent line store as well, where it's kind of like he's out of ideas and maybe the game has passed him out. And I know he doesn't have the best batch of players there at the moment, but like I know Ospreys are flying high in the Champions Cup, but. It just looks like he's in over Do you think he's had enough time with them to shake it up and make Probably them improve, not. Though. Probably not. But maybe like as in, okay, maybe it's probably it's an unfair way of putting it. Maybe it's just that like in years gone by, someone like a Gatlin could come in and make that impact, impact very quickly. Okay. But I don't think he can anymore. I don't think he has that power anymore. Like maybe. No, and I, don't, I think you're right. I, mean, I think it's a combination of he's, he doesn't, he hasn't evolved with the game. Yeah. But I also don't think he's the players there to do that, even if no. he wanted yeah. Like, I think we, you know, time and time again over the last two seasons anyway, we have alluded to the fact that Wales rugby is in such disarray. Their provinces were performing so poorly in the URC. Like, other than Rio Dyer and uh, what's his name, Jack, the back row. Like, I don't think anyone's really come up even close to being like, look what we're producing. You know, we talk about the Ryan Bars, the Craig Casey's like who's come up for Welsh rugby and said, oh, here I am. I'm the new kid on the block. Yeah. Nobody really. Do you yeah. know? It's not it's not a great situation for Wales, but like give him a bit of time, give Gatland a bit of time. He basically came in just before the Six Nations started. And same with same with Steve Bortwick, who will chat about England in a while. He's still kind of figuring it out with England, like so I suppose you gotta give these guys a bit of time. But I do hear what you're saying there, Jason, is is he past it? Has he come back and opened up a book he didn't need to open again? Yeah, maybe like he, maybe he's just gonna tarnish his legacy and tarnish his reputation by coming back. But I think so. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean it doesn't look good for him. You know, from from whatever way you look at it, it's like you've got a hell of a job on your hands that you probably shouldn't have taken, maybe. No. Yeah, because <laughs> Bortwick sure. has a pool of players. Like he just needs to now get them singing off the same hymn sheet and playing his style of rugby. So he's very different. That he's loads of choices, but I don't see where what pool of players now are going to ignite Welsh rugby. Like there's nothing. There's either an old batch who've who've created a legacy, and there's nothing come up coming up to create a new one. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're kind of relying on the old heads like the George Norton, the centre. and Alan. Sure, he's injured every week. He's injured, yeah. yeah. But if you look at that, what the, the team he put out against Ireland, like, it was like looking like a, a Wales team that's put out like in 2009 That's or something. Yeah, like yeah. he won last one the championship. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. he tried that the first week and then he brought in younger players. And then Bortwick seems to be adapting the opposite where Bortwick mm-hmm. is bringing in young players. Yeah. But for me, I think, I don't know if that's going to work with England because it feels like he feels like he's at the start of a World Cup cycle. I know. I, you're, yeah, you're right. You're, you're six months away from the World Cup. You, you don't <laughs> it's have time a bit late to, to be, doing to be that bringing like, all yeah, these yeah. young guys in and get them up. You should just go, OK, let's tighten the ship and let's get mm-hmm. a good, solid, strong England team that has a chance of doing well in the Six Nations and going somewhere in the World Cup and then start again yeah. fresh. Well, maybe, yeah, we're yeah, we, 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 sure we'll go on to the England game now because yeah. we're, chat, we're chatting about it. So England beat Italy 31-14 um, in Twickenham. And England came out really, really well. So they're playing a lot of new young fellas, as you mentioned there. They were 19 nil up at half time. And we kind of have this new batch of England players like Jack Willis was incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, Ollie Cheston was top notch as well. Um, we had Aaron Arundel came on. We had Mitchell came yeah. on. So yeah. nice kind of uh, change of the Mitchell tide with the well. England guys coming on. But as you're saying there, Jason, you feel like it's too soon to a World Cup to be bringing all these guys into the squad and trying to get them blooded. That's it, that's it. Yeah, Ollie Lawrence, another young guy, was absolutely fantastic, got man of the match. Like, um, Ollie Lawrence at 12, yeah. Yeah, Ireland at 12. Like, but, you know, as I said, like he's he, he dropped Marcus Smith and he's got fired back in there again and he's got these younger guys in around the back three and stuff and he's mm-hmm. got a young kind of pack in there and he's switching a lot of things around where if it was me, look, come here, who am I to judge? Who am I to judge Steve Bortwick when you look at the job he did with Leicester Tigers in mm-hmm. such a short amount of time? Like they were down in the depths lower than when Munster were all those years ago and brought him back up to win a premiership like in mm. a very short space of time but yeah looking at England at the moment like I didn't see much of them like I mean 31-14 you're like oh England got a bonus point winning against Italy like if you watch the game like they, they weren't great and no, they let Italy were very times. much in that mm. game for most of it and at one stage it looked like Italy were going to get back into it yeah. Yeah. and they got you know a couple of late tries it was like you know I was only saying it to Pat there before the show, like Italy are starting to remind me of like France years ago where they was all joué, like they'll run, they'll play, they'll everything like, but then they just don't have that structure about yes. them and that coaching that's there go, okay, you can do all of that, but you need to have your, your mm. bricks and mortar there like and mm. actually not let in silly choices and have a bit of structure there. But they yeah, don't have that. Even last week, they were so narrow around the work with France. And I was like, yeah. if France were actually even playing at 50%, they'd absolutely annihilate you now. So, mm. yeah, if they could get a get, bit of game management and a bit of, like, really strict structure, especially around their defence. They've got the players. Yes, How absolutely. How good was Caputo going to be? Uh, okay. He's the best player in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Sorry, that's a stretch. But, like, he is... <laughs> as probably, Italian so he is. Do you know what he is? He's the most entertaining player in the world to watch at the moment. And I would I'll go, I'll go out on a limb and happily say that. Yeah. Because he's the only player at the moment where I'm like, when he gets the ball, I'm like... <gasps> What's he going to do now? What's he going to do now? What's he going to do now? Is he going to run? Is he going to step? Is he going to kick? Ah, he's up to me. Two guys. Go again. Go again. Get him the ball. Get him the ball. Get him the ball. Get him the ball. He's like brilliant rug- to watch. Yeah, no, he is. He's a rugby like fan's dream. Do you know? Yeah, he is. He's a, he played absolutely class himself, a full back in Minoncello on the wing for Italy. And then we had Fusco came on at nine. So they have loads of nice young fellas that are able to move the ball around. Mm. And they're, they're making gaps in that England defence like easy peasy but as you're saying there, there Jason they seem to lack that kind of cohesiveness and the structure in their systems and that's how England were like getting a mall try against mm. them and just going up by seven points and and that's where they seem to be falling down but that probably just comes with time like Italy have improved so much in the last couple of seasons like they're no longer like the guaranteed wooden spoon where they're getting smashed they're fighting every game and like to, only, to be within 31-14 points against England away in Twickenham like is actually a really good mm. result so um, I do think Italy are in a good spot, but England have seemed to be kind of pulling it together. Do you think they're they're getting in a good spot? Yeah, I think they are. I think they're just stripping it back. They're trying to get a lot of players. You know, I do see your point about Steve Borthwick and what does he do now when we kind of had this argument before he took on the role, like he has such little time. Mm. So is his philosophy now just to get a lot of players just uh, blooded now over the Six Nations because he really has nothing to lose again he knows what his the elder lemons and the more experienced English players can do. So does he rest them and kind of keep them on the fringes now and just, you know, get... Yeah, is he trying to figure out like his second that's string what players? I, that's that what, what I think he's yeah, doing yeah. right now because how else can he play it? Do you know, because it's the div- he has the div he knows. So now he has to kind of yeah. get those young players out and see yeah, what they can do on yeah. international stage. Like how good are the finds of Jack Willis and Ollie Chesson? Well, Jack been, Willis has been around a long time now, but yeah. he's just finally getting his chance. Sure he's, he's only 25 though. Yeah, yeah. But like Jack, we, we know how good Jack Willis is, but he, he had problems with injury and stuff there. He was out injured for... A big oh, injury, he was out he? for a year and yeah. a bit like, and he's over... He's, he's over Toulouse, Toulouse now, isn't now, he? Yeah, yeah. Toulouse signed him up when Wasp went under. But like for me, if I'm looking at any team again the weekend, 
I don't even give them a 1% chance against France or Ireland. I really don't. The way they're playing at the moment, I don't give them any no, hope. I think the Wales game, like, I mean, pff, we probably put a team together and beat Wales, won't we? Let's say, would we? <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here you first. I mean? Let's be honest, like, with the way they're going at the moment, yeah. like, but, you know, I don't see much of them at all. Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm, look, uh, we said this time and time again, like, come a World Cup, England normally get their ducks mm. in a row, but the Six Nations, they ain't going to be France, they ain't going to beat Ireland, like. Yeah, well, um, they're going away to Wales next week, or not in two weeks. There's a gap week in the Six Nations, mm. and they're going to yeah, they're going over to the Principality. To that would probably be a like not a highly spectacle game, but a good battle between the two of them because they're both struggling. Both struggling, and if like I was Steve Bortic, like they're three, they're three nice games he's opened up his championship with. So like if you look at the video reviews and all the errors they would have made and what style he wants to play, like he's going to have so much like to feed into his players. Like and he's now a week to kind of give them breathing space and give that instruction and build towards and like that will probably be a pinnacle game for them it's if you think about game it. For England, yeah. Absolutely. So I'd be targeting all their goals based on the first two rounds mistakes and where they want to see themselves against Wales. And then if you think now if they can get a good win against Wales and it kind of slightly fix some of their problems and they build in a bit of consistency against France and Ireland, I don't think they'll beat us. But I think they could be a potential like Imagine now coming England, you have something to prove. Ireland are unbeaten now in the last round of the championship. They could be something. Again, I don't see them. It's Paddy's weekend. It's going to be, yeah. It's, yeah. it's our destiny, to be <laughs> honest. Potential Grand Slam decider. Yeah, like. I don't see work them. Already, yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's going to be. I can't make it in that one day. It's <laughs> <laughs> just oh, going to yes. be this black cape shrouded oh, over yeah. Ireland, you know, because we're going in celebration. But yeah. yeah, I think that's where I'd be looking at if I was Steve Bortwick, to be honest. Um, just kind of building and using this now. And the only thing I'd say on the flip side about that, and like I'm trying to give him a little more credit again, I'm trying to, I'm giving you throwing as much rope as I can, Wales. That Wales and England game, right? Mm. No matter how bad their Six Nations is going, right? They have England at home. If they, like Gatlin knows and the players know, if, if they win, beat yeah. England, then all of a sudden the fans are off their back because they don't care what happens Six Nations, like we beat England. Because they, they, like, they have that similar thing that we have. Like we've had that before in the past. We've had a poor Six Nations. We had that one there years back where Peter Amani came on as a late, well, just when he still got injured. And yeah. we were having a really bad run of games. And England were, I think England had already won the Six Nations. They're coming for a Grand Slam. Yeah. And I think we finished third or fourth, mm. whatever it was. But we beat England <laughs> and in the last game. And all of a sudden, it was a successful, it was a successful yeah. Six Nations. All is forgiven. That was, I remember <laughs> that, because that was Peter Armani's, like game because he was out for ages and he slip was it was Stan, Stan was playing six he slip was eight and that mm -hmm. was when it was unfortunate that was he said never played again because after that pulled up that back, one yeah. but, but like we looked at that then as a successful six nations because we beat England yeah. and that would yeah, be the so same and, be we, good, and it drove us on after that it'd be a great result for Borwick I think to go away to Wales and get a win there back to back beating Italy beating Wales away even though it's a poor Wales team I think that's going to like solidify Steve Borwick that he's doing something well there in England because mm -hmm. people were starting to say that if they lost against Italy that Borwick would be out and ah, I was like come on, nah the like the last in the people that time yeah, yeah. I think that will be the game of that week, to be honest, is, is England Wales. I think they'll be skin and hair flying, to be honest. Yeah, because Scotland are way to France. I think if that was a reverse fixture, if France were going to Scotland, it'd be, it'd be tough to win over in Scotland the way they're yeah. in, at the moment, because Scotland are fifth in the world. Finn Russell's playing out of his skin. They have a really good team, but they're going to play in France. I I really can't see France mm. losing that. What do you think? No, not. They're so they're ridiculously solid, yeah. you know, at home. And... I think there's a different uh, kind of vibe of French teams, like whether it's Sean Edwards being in, but they're a lot more grounded, a lot more humble. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I don't think they're going to take Scotland lightly. I think they will respectfully beat them, yeah. do you know, and they'll they have their home. After Absolutely. <laughs> and they'll have something to prove, they'll, especially to yeah. the French people. Um, it's not that they're fickle, but they expect a lot from their from their French teams. Mm. Do you so. think they'll be hurt, Jason? Is like That's the first match France have lost in over 12 mm -hmm. months. 14 and games 14 games something yeah. crazy like that like, yeah. do you think they'll be hurting I would say hurt I'd say, I would say more angry I would say kind of roiled up motivated like they're not going to like there's no way they're going to say we we can afford to lose two games in a row if we want to consider ourselves to be serious rugby world cup contenders mm -hmm. they can't like as, as good as Scotland they're playing like and they're back at they're back at home for this game yes. so friends are at home yeah I mean they didn't know themselves like I I think in a way it's probably good for Scotland because it's like yeah, after getting the monkey off their back and get those two rings in a row, no one expects them to win in France. So mm. maybe that might suit because that side yeah. of the play is kind of like That's true. Well, we've nothing to pretty much lose here because like, no one expects us to win. Yeah. So like they were expected to beat Wales. They were. They really were like. And there'd be some nice battles. The centre partnership, the wings, Van der Merwe, 
uh, Penno. Like there'll be some really nice individual. The halfback pairing, you know, Dupont against Finn Russell. Kind mm. of um, there'll be some nice uh, one-on-one battles. It'll be a good game. Absolutely, yeah. Scotland are going to roll over. And I think yeah. France will be very disappointed that as much as they did get return when they came into Ireland's green zone, uh, into their green zone um, against Ireland, they didn't really threaten our try line. Mm. Really. Other than the Penno exceptional world-class try that was kind of. That was just created. Like Absolutely, really yeah. Up. Some quick thinking by Ramos, you know, flicking that back and he just took his chances. Yeah, other but than that, we weren't really under too much pressure. Nah, no, we weren't yeah. at all. No, no. Do you know, so they would be disappointed with that considering. Mm. Do you know? Um, they're, you know, Dupas used to opening gaps. Entomac probably, the fact even that he couldn't get those cross field kicks, which we saw a lot of, you know, to success with a number of teams over the weekend. Um, yeah. yeah, they'd be hurting. They'll be hurting. They will be hurting. And, and you kind of said it there a while ago, Lindsay, is wanted to pick up on it, and that France have a respect for other teams about them now. Mm-hmm. I was working at the game on the weekend. I was interviewing fans. I interviewed a lot of French fans. Oh, yeah. And they were so respectful to Ireland. They were like, oh, Ireland are very good. I think they might win today, but uh, there's a World Cup coming <laughs> up. The accent. And, and like, I was just is like, Is there what? French in your DNA? Yeah. <laughs> 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 and, uh, <laughs> and they were, I couldn't, I was like, I would have had the kind of, uh, thought that French were very arrogant and stuff when it came to rugby but they weren't they were actually they seemed quite worried coming over that they were going to lose even though they'd been on this unbeaten run so Ireland have been put up on that pedestal now and even though before I would have been like oh I don't know if we can sit up there and uh, like we don't do well when we're out in front Mm. I agree with what you both said earlier in that I think we're good enough to be there now. We can be out in front that we are the best team in the world yep. and we played like it. So I'm, I'm starting to be like, maybe we can win this World yeah. Cup. I think that's funny just as you were saying that because I saw some like comments on uh, New Zealand's page today. Someone was trying to say that, you know, like the Six Nations is definitely far superior than Rugby Championship. No, like just saying it's a better tournament and as we were saying earlier, like the two best teams in the world were definitely playing the weekend mm. and you just, all oh, the comments like what are you talking about? New Zealand are going to smash you all come to the World Cup. We're going to be back uh North Hemisphere is, is still a crap rugby. That's why they've only won one World Cup out of all of them they've ever been played. Like, in fairness, that's England are the only team to have won it. Yeah, it's been true. South Hemisphere, South Hemisphere for, for all of that. Yeah. But, like, I think the tide will certainly turn this time around. I, do, I can't see past, I'm not going to go out on a limb here, I can't see past a North Hemisphere team winning the World Cup. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be Ireland or France. 100%. I, I can't see Ireland losing a game in the way they're playing at the moment. Mm-hmm. And we have all those five players that I mentioned at the start to still come back in, like the Furlongs and the Henshaws and Gibson Park. Like We still have unbelievable top, players top to come players. back in. Like. Top players. I think it'll be that, you know, very cliche, but I mean, first round against South Africa, I mean, it won't be... Di- I think if we can get that win, it was a bit like Wales last week, it'll just set the tone for our tournament. Um, and I would rather, yeah, France. I think we have the power to match it after, we do, which yeah. we showed, but then we also have the speed and the skill to absolutely bamboozle them, to be honest mm. with you. And we've found our kahunas now, so you know, we going. have a bit of everything. Like, and there's <laughs> we such, do. we were so, what, that's what killed us in that 2019 World Cup going in, is we very much played one style of rugby, and it was very readable. And, and we only had a certain 15. And that was yeah, it. Yeah, we know, like, no, no We have so many different ways of playing now that you don't even know what Ireland are going to do yourself. I'd say Andy yeah. Farrell's making it up on the go. I was like, let's do this now. We can do whatever we want. Mm. <laughs> They're class. so well adversed, I think, in, 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 in every area of the game and every mm. position. Yeah. We're looking forward to the next Six Nations game. We're going away to Rome. Uh, we're playing Italy down in their beautiful stadium down Actually, there. Actually, Pat said he was bringing us for a live show for that week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> live show, I, I wish. Greg, he's first class now. And he also has a bit of Italian in him. So he has <laughs> I'll work on my Italian we, we, accent for that. Economy, it's okay. We're fine. You just but, put in first class. <laughs> <laughs> With that Italian game coming up, how do you think Ireland are going to look at that? Andy Farrell, is he going to play his... I'd say second string lads, even though it's kind of mean to call them second string. But do you think Casey will get a start? Do you think Rob Ross Byrne will get a start? Do you think he'll give Bundy a key his start back? What's yeah, his? I think he's he's going to give uh, players who are on the fringes and probably holding their hand up and just slightly not getting the nod because, as we all know in rugby, it's it's your jersey to lose. So the lads who he's been picking to start have not let him down. So I think maybe he's going to reward to keep. Keep the culture, keep the fight, keep the voice. And he has to use this game, I think, to give lads experience. You can't go through five games and not give lads yeah. experience to get like test rugby. Like you think Jack Crowley will get a few minutes, that kind of stuff. Do you know what I mean? Where yeah, I do th- see him of this game, possibly without being disrespectful to the Italians, of leaving Johnny out. Like he'll be there, he'll be round. He'd be, like you saw Keith Earls doing the water and that yeah. experience in around the fringes. And I think he might do that with Johnny because he kind of come off obviously a bit. You got a dead leg. Yeah. Yeah. And I think right now we need to manage them. And I think the two lads are, are worth their weight now to give them a, a mm. shot. I think Rossburn needs to start a game and he needs to build that confidence that we saw the weekend. 
You give him 80 minutes or give him like 60 I'd minutes. I'd give him 60 and, and get Jack Crowley in, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you think, Jason? I think the days are gone of like playing Italy and uh, calling guys up for giving me caps. Mm. But in saying that, I don't think we have any players in the squad at the moment that are giving me caps. Because oh, not like that. Just such, we've, we've done that in the past. Like, you know, there's guys out there that have one cap against Italy, like, or two caps, <laughs> both, both against Italy. <laughs> and they're kind of giving around. Should we give them a go here and see if it's any good? Like, we don't have any players like that in the squad. No. There's like, of course, there's guys that are better than other guys, which is why you have a starting 15. But I think there's very much a core group of probably 24, 25 players there where you swap guys out. It doesn't make, it doesn't make a difference. They're just as good. Yeah. You know, probably I would say the only real positions where you're kind of downgrading maybe is Ty Furlong or Johnny Sexton mm. but then again look how good Bielan was the weekend look how good uh, Tom O'Toole was the weekend look how good Ross Byrne was coming on so mm. like there is guys yeah. there so I think Dave Kilcoyne he's gonna, well. yeah Dave Kilcoyne I think he's going to make changes I'd like to see Crowley at the very least get a spot on the bench I'd like to get some minutes because I think yeah. he's good enough not give me minutes he's an absolute fantastic outstanding talent mm-hmm. that we want to see more of and you know, yeah, maybe Boniaki needs minutes. So, like, Boniaki is a proven line. It's not like it's just give Boniaki a run against Italy. It's Bundy bloody Yaki. Mm. So, and there's a lot of guys there. There's guys in the back three. Like, I mean, Jimmy O'Brien hasn't got a run out yet. Like, and we know Jimmy O'Brien is class. And Jimmy O'Brien will be brilliant against Italy. And Gavin Coombs, you know, we're going to bring again, Gavin yeah. in. Do you know, there are lads who are well, were, like, uh, agree. So, if it was misconstrued, there's no, there's no pity caps. I think there's just lads who, who kind of need to. I probably need just that injection of confidence, a bit yeah. of game time. It's not anything, it's just to get them the experience. And I think, not to be disrespectful for to Italy, but it'll be a chance to arrest some of the bigger yeah, guys who've been sure. starting, you know. Well, we're just, we're in that position now where we have the luxury of doing that and bringing, bringing on world-class players mm-hmm. to start, like a Jimmy O'Brien, who's one yeah. of the best players in the world. I think at a the funny moment, one like. the weekend, when you think about it, so like we lost Dan Sheehan during the week, right? Mm. And then we lost Rob Herring early, early on. And then we were forced to bring on uh, Ronan Keller as our third choice. <laughs> like forced. So we ended up with Ronan Keller. Like to look back that we lose our two hookers and then all of a sudden you've got Ronan Keller who was with the Lions over the summer. Like that's phenomenal. And he hadn't played in <laughs> over 12 months more for Ireland with the injury. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was very lucky to be having unbelievable players like that. So let's go on to pick our never stop competing moment of the week with Bank of Ireland. There was a lot of moments we could have picked from. I like James Lowe's. I like Gary Ringrose's tries. Mm-hmm. But I think it has to go to Anton DuPont's tackle on Mac Hansen. Yeah. What do you think, guys? Yeah, agreed. It was some, some tackle. I've never said anything like it. So DuPont, I know you're listening, brother. Well done. You get a never stop competing moment of the week together at Bank of Ireland. Now, before we wrap up, if you were to pick in World 15 right now, guys, how many Irish guys would be straight into that 15? Oh, God. Johnny Sexton, I think, is number Minimum one. Minimum five, anyway. I'd pick, yeah, Johnny Sexton. Who else do you think? I'd have Tyke Byrne in there. I'd have Furlong Keenan. in there. Keenan. So that's four we've already in the team. So Out who of the do whole we go world. with? Sexton. Doris is definitely in there. Ah, Doris, Brenda yeah. Fear is in there. <laughs> yeah, we're, six. We're six already out of 15 <laughs> on, in the what world. What are you talking about? Whole Ireland. This is a world 15. <laughs> Gary Ringrose is in there at the moment on current form. He's up there. Yeah. I mean, who else? I mean, we probably is Lucan Yuan. Well, Lucan Yuan. Mm, that's that's tough, a big argument there. Like. It's tough on form at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so we have six in there. Or is that seven we have? Seven now, I think. Who else? That's probably definitely. Who do we say? Sorry, what do you say again? So we said we're starting in front of what? So we say like. Oh yeah, sorry. Like you probably like Porter is up there in the argument, like isn't he? I suppose is he up there? Like who who is above Porter at the moment? Like you'd say maybe before African the props. game you would have said Sir Boy, maybe a couple of South African pops. So he'd yeah. be up and he'd be in the conversation. Well, this, this, is like, off, like, this is uh, like not even an argument. Like they're in the world not fifteen an guys. Oh, uh, I, like I would have like possibly would have put Dan Sheen in there before he got injured. Like, well, look, the the guarantees are uh, Furlong. Doris D- Furlong, okay. uh, Ring Rose, okay. yeah, yeah. Van der Feer, he's World Player of the Year. Right, uh, yeah, okay, Van der Feer, <laughs> so that's four. What are we thinking of Sexton? Yeah, so I don't know if I put Sexton. Well, like Finn Russell's Gordon, coming up. I Who don't. else have we got at 10? You could uh, have Bowden Barrett down in his ears. Huh? You could have Bowden Barrett well, in I there. I wouldn't put Johnny uh, in, I know just want to say it. You wouldn't put Johnny in as the starting no, out half in the world. Not right now, probably, no, but world, no. He's so taking Johnny he out. I hope he's yeah, not listening. No. Well, Dupont listens to us. That's all I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dupont. Well, he's your nine. Look at he's still he's still the best in the world. Well, you got to remember now. Johnny Sexton was nominated for World Player of the Year, guys. But this I, is I, our I'm show. Not taking it away from him, like, but I wouldn't. So, like, he is. Either. We're keeping him seen as we're keeping him grounded. To be honest, one of the best <laughs> tens in the world, if not the best in ten. He was the only out half that was in the nominations. Fair enough, but I'd still no. I wouldn't. Put Johnny I think. <laughs> well, you see, there's so much competition for him now, whereas the the. The four we've just picked have like their standout. I don't think there's anyone kind of competing with them, really. Okay. Fair enough, guys. 
Thanks very much for your insight. We're going to have to wrap that up there. Um, it was a really good show, guys. Six yeah. Nations is well and truly live. We're only two weeks in and it's been one of the best tournaments I've watched so far. Um, and we've a gap week now and then we're coming back. We're playing Italy, but there's also URC back next week. Mm -hmm. So that'll be a good one to watch. See Munster back at it and Leinster back at it. Um, but until then, guys, thank you so much, Lindsay. Thank you. Have a great week. Thank you so much, Jason. And of course, thank you to you at home for listening and a big thank you to Bank of Ireland, our sponsors and proud supporters of the four Irish provinces. We'll catch you next week, guys, for the URC. Joe presents House of Rugby, together with Bank of Ireland, proud supporter of the four Irish provinces.